with Sean's mum. And I'm just going to tell you a bit about the effect that um, getting involved in drugs and prison and that lifestyle can have on the family. Um, my story isn't going to be as gory as Sean's. I'm sure you all had enough go. <laughs> it's quite horrific, isn't it? Um, I've heard it so many times and I've read about it. I know it's as though it's somebody else. You know, although I, although I lived through it, it's still... I know Zivi read the book, Sean's daughter read the book recently, and I asked her how she felt, and she said it was though it was um, reading about somebody else. You know, I think it's a defence mechanism to protect yourself, really. Um, I'd also like to say that Sean committed a crime. You know, he, he deserved to be punished. If you take drugs and you get involved in that kind of lifestyle, somewhere down the line, it's going to all go per shape, isn't it? It's all going to go wrong. Um, he deserved to be punished, but he didn't deserve the... I don't think anybody deserves the conditions in Ohio's prisons. You know, it's a particularly tough prison. And he's uh, Joe Apayo, Sheriff Joe, he's very proud of the fact that it costs more to feed the dogs than it does the prisoners. He has a, a shelter for dogs, which is very nice, you know, to do something kind for animals. But he, he, he spends more on feeding them than he does the prisoners. And when Sean was in prison, I wrote to um, Amnesty and all these different, you know, human rights places about the abuses that were going on in there. But because he's an elected sheriff, there's nothing anybody can do because the people keep electing him because they think he's tough on crime. So people think it's good to be tough on crime. But if you look at the statistics in Arizona, the crime rate is higher than the national average and the recidivism rate is higher. So it doesn't work. So making people, treating people like animals doesn't make them better people. I don't know what you think about. Do you think prisons here are too soft? Anybody? You don't know. No. But you hear, you read, like Sean said, you read in the papers, don't you, that they're playing video games and you know. Um, That's good though, in a way, because I don't know. I'm sorry for all the people that obviously do the crimes because some of them could be like mistakes. And yeah. it's humans that make mistakes, so definitely. And half of them go for like you know reason, even though they're not in connection with God. So if you sorry for them, and I think it's wrong that in jails a lot of bad stuff happens, like the scam stuff and fighting and right. it's all wrong. Because yeah, I mean, we're all humans, and yeah, we shouldn't be fighting like animals. I mean, even animals are better. Even they have more things for each other, like compared to us, because the mouth. Yeah, I just think I'm definitely. Against violence. Well, I think having your freedom taken away from that's. That's really is, is, is enough, isn't it, yeah. really? And providing video games and televisions and things is a way of keeping the prisoners occupied, isn't yeah, it? So they don't so, fight amongst each other. Yeah, exactly. So they're less likely, really, to to be involved in violence. But it's, it, it, it's a... You know, some people, when they read about Sheriff Joe in the paper, they say, oh, well, why aren't the prisons over here should be like that? You know, it's it depends on, you, on you, your attitude, really, because... Some people think it's just about revenge and making the person suffer, but it should be about rehabilitation, shouldn't it? You know, because these people have to come back into the community, don't they? And they have to, um, they could be your neighbour, couldn't they? You know, they have to come back into the community, so they need to be re rehabilitated and so that they can take up a, a position in society and do something useful. Um, rather than come out hating society and feeling, um, you know, more isolated and alienated from society. I'm going a bit off the track now, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so Sean deserved to be punished, but like I say, th th this prison is just something else, you know. I, I mean, can you imagine a mum, you know, your child, getting letters from your child, telling you about what, you know, these awful things. It, it was just horrendous, you know, we couldn't believe it. And when we went to visit him in a Pios prison, he was like emaciated. 
no, he looked like a, 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 he'd been in a concentration camp, you know, because they, they, they didn't have enough, they didn't give them enough food. Um, so it was, it was really horrific, but I supported Sean because Sean was my son and, you know, people have said to me, well, you know, he did all these awful things, he didn't think about you, he was selfish, so why, why, why did you support him? You know, I wouldn't have done that. But I knew, I knew that basically Sean was a good person and that, you know, things had gone wrong over there and he'd made a mistake, like you say, we're all human, aren't we? It's a big mistake. And I think it just escalated out of control. And the more drugs he took, the more he got delusions of grandeur, and he thought he was invincible, and no one could touch him, and he forgot about us, basically, you know. But, but I, um, I was a teacher, you know. I, I, I taught at a further education college, and. I didn't, when I first found out, I was in such a shock, I didn't tell anybody. I didn't tell my sister, and I, I have a daughter who has a, a sister and my husband, and I, I made them promise not to tell anybody, because I was in such a state of shock. Um, I couldn't believe my son, who'd gone to university, got an honours degree, had, you know, done so well, gone to America, became a top stockbroker, believe that he got involved in drugs you know he had everything why you know he had everything and then drugs destroyed him and so it was awful thinking that this child you brought up had ended up in this in, in, in this um, awful prison so I, did, I, I thought that people would I was thinking of myself at first really because I was ashamed and embarrassed and I thought people would uh, throw bricks through the window and paint drug dealers on the walls of the house and you know I thought and I'd lose my job at college you know I was a teacher a respected profession you know teachers don't have drug dealer sons it was you know it was something awful and but so I kept it a secret for about three months and then at work at this incident that Sean was telling you about there were some ESOL students sitting there and I suddenly got into my head that they, that they knew all about it and I started running around the, the, the room shouting, they all know, they all know, they've read it in the papers, read it in there. And I just went completely berserk and had to be calmed down. And I told my manager then what had happened and she said, I can't believe you kept this to yourself. I mean, I taught psychology, so I shouldn't have known. I don't know if any of you do psychology. But you should have, you should, I shouldn't have known that you shouldn't keep it inside. You know, you've got to get, the, get these things out. She said, I can't believe you've kept all this to yourself. And anyway, she was really, really supportive. She took me off to the HR and they said, if you need time off, you can. She took me to the principal of the college who was wonderful and understanding. I didn't <coughs> lose my job. You know, they were all really wonderful. And I told family and friends and everybody was, was just wonderful so it's always if you do ever have anything always remember to share it with people close to you because keeping it all inside is just you know that's why you have the nervous breakdown because it has to come out and friends